There were people out there who were buying the beanies, and this was their livelihood. The prices were an up. 350 and up. 450 and up. $900. My sales in 1996 were $2.6 million, and in 1997, they were $23 million. New HBO Max documentary Beanie Mania takes a closer look at the 90s era collector's craze and how a fad that started in a Chicago suburb became a nationwide phenomenon. The director of the film is Yemisi Brooks and uh, she joins us now. Good morning. Hello, how are you Hi. doing? Good to see you. So how did this all get started? Was this just like a, a word of mouth thing that, I mean, we know it started here in the Chicago suburbs. Yeah, exactly. So, um, do you mean how did the documentary get started, or how did the how did the craze get started? Well, the, maybe you could tell me both. <laughs> okay. So, um, in terms of the craze, yes. So, um, Ty Warner uh, is a toy manufacturer, um, and uh, he had been uh, manufacturing toys for a few years uh, when he brought out Beanie Babies. Um, he was already making plush cats and all sorts of um, other kind of animals, but he decided to make something at um, a slightly lower price point and something which was kind of cheap and easy uh, for kids to buy. And a small number of mums, uh, soccer mums from uh, the Naperville area really kind of got behind it. Um, and after a few years, it kind of became not so much a craze for children, but more a craze for adults, uh, which then kind of morphed into becoming uh, an investment for adults. But initially, yeah. it was really meant as something for kids. I wonder if it was, I remember coinciding a little bit, maybe with the, with the tech, but like everybody was buying tech stocks. So they thought they were going to make a trillion dollars, of course. And even if they knew nothing about it, it, was it similar for the Beanie Babies that people just, for some reason, thought it would be an investment? I mean, I think so. And, and they really were going for crazy amounts of money um, at some point. But the bubble didn't last very long, which is kind of where the, where the problem came. But there certainly was uh, an amount of time in which if you, ha if you bought the right Beanie Babies and sold the right Beanie Babies, you know, that could be your kid's college fund. And of course, word spread. And so everyone thought, well, I want in on that action. Um, and thus the kind of phenomenon really started. So why did you think this made a documentary? Was it, it, was it a a symptom of what was happening in the 90s? Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting to look back at the, at the time uh, now, you know, with our sort of, well, we made it last year, so with our 2021 eyes. And what you notice about uh, the time is it was it was pre-9-11, so it's certainly a kind of simpler time. It's obviously pre-pandemic. Um, it was also kind of pre-internet. Um, and at the time, I think people just felt like it was a really sort of good old, um, you know, all-American thing to be searching for teddy bears, and that felt like a really nice thing to be doing. And then, of course, as, as um, Joni uh, Hirsch Blackman, one of the women in the film, says, it was all perfect until the adults ruined it. Yeah. So uh -huh. it started out as a, as a nice thing for kids and then all changed. Yeah, so what led to uh, some being worth a lot and some not being worth a lot? I, I assume that maybe had something to do with the downfall. <laughs> Yeah, no. So what happened was that the the um, company that was manufacturing them never really put out any um, information or statistics in the early days. So and also they weren't sold through big box stores. So in order to get them, it was it kind of was like a bit of a treasure hunt. You would have to go to drug stores or gift shops. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> So you couldn't just go to Walmart and get the whole lot. Right. And what also happened was you never knew um, if a Beanie Baby was going to be retired. So the retirement really became a thing that um, limited runs of certain Beanie Babies were produced. And of course, that dro really drove the value because once people hear that there's only a, a, you know, a limited run, people are, are then desperate to get them. So I know that a lot of people talk about the Princess Diana bear. That was one that in the beginning uh, was going for very high value, although actually a lot of those were um, produced. Um, but there's also kind of interesting cases where sometimes um, uh, certain Beanie Babies would be produced wrongly. So there is a certain um, uh, kind of little duck, which is known as the wingless quacker, because when he was kind of produced in the factory, he had no wings. Mm. So if you have one of those, that's a, a sort of very um, important and, and expensive one to so get. Are, they, so, are there people that still have a ton of these and they're, are they worth nothing? Are any of them worth any money anymore? The, I mean, I, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but they're not really worth a lot. And everyone seems to have them. This is what was kind 
kind of interesting to me as you can tell I'm a, I'm a Brit I'm not from here and during the months that we were filming it everyone said hey listen my mum's got a Tupperware tub of them how much can I get for them and I'm like I, not that much I'm sorry they didn't, <laughs> they didn't hold their value they really didn't uh, hold their value uh, you from Wisconsin <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beanie Mania is streaming now on HBO Max. You can also check out YemeseyBrooks.com and find her on Instagram. Thank you so much. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.